What do you mean pineapples? I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I have no idea what a safe word is, and we're going to talk about goals and how we're going to get somewhere today. My name is Jeff. That's Kim, where my wife still likes me. What year is it again? All of the, that really is my wife. Should I leave? And we're going to roll an intro I haven't made yet, but hopefully it looks good. Your voice changes when you do that. Still married, I think. Oh my gosh. Hi, honey. How are you? Oh my gosh. I, re- I really don't like pineapples, though. I know you don't. Anyway. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uncommon questions. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I need to get away from that. Okay, so I'm pulling this one. Oh, gosh. If it's really that bad, you can put it back. You have to keep it clean. (sighs) (laughs) Have you ever faked something? What did you fake and why did you do it? (laughs) I feel like we've already answered this question. Do we need to mix these up? No, I put all the ones Mike and I already answered back in there and just started over. What is something I faked? What was the rest of the question? What did you fake and why did you do it? Well, I've never faked that. Um, what did I fake? Oh, man. I fake sometimes being interested in what my son is talking about. I think we all do that. But frankly, there's some days I think you fake what I'm talking about, but that's okay. Uh, we had a whole conversation about transition time and when you're calling me from work and I'm not even listening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True story. Um, what have I faked? Man, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but I don't know. I fake interest in a lot of things, which is horrible for me because I talk to a lot of people all the time. Yeah. Um, you're best friends with everyone you meet. The gas station, the grocery <laughs> store, the bank. <laughs> All the time. Oh, some Extrovert, I introvert. Faked. I don't know. I fake a lot of confidence. All the time. Yeah, you do. Uh, but I don't think it's normally... Like, it's not like with, like, malicious intent. It's... I really have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to fake it. it. It's like fake it till you make it kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I liked, I mean, I'm sure it's, this isn't like a hundred percent accurate, but I like to think I'm pretty genuine all the time. Like I don't Mm -hmm. sugarcoat who I am. Um, Yeah. I have like put, this sounds weird and I don't mean it dirty, but I've put more clothes on that were probably necessary for the event. (laughs) Um, like dressed up, like Mm -hmm. overdressed for something that I didn't need to, um, because of the people or whoever was in the room, like a client meeting or uh you do that to me all the time over really twice well hold on no 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 this is how we normally dress and so like you're a you know board shorts and t-shirt kind of guy and i I see us from here up this (laughs) i'm okay with this okay i may or may not be wearing pajama pants okay stop judging Um, no, but like I wear nicer shirts and so we'll go to dinner or something and you'll be like, oh, you're wearing that shirt and you will go and put more clothes on. Like you'll put a button up or a polo on based off of what I'm. So now after 15 years, you don't get fully dressed until I am. Yes. Or like the last time we did this, I laid out like two shirts on the bed and then you came out of the bathroom like, oh, I can just wear a (laughs) t-shirt. So true. That would be, yes, I fake that yeah. all the time. I yeah. will overdress even for, like, family dinners, um, which is still okay. Like, it's yeah. overdressing is not, but, like, yeah. it's not me. Like, I am genuinely, like, shorts and a T-shirt, but I will put pants and nice shoes on, long pants and nice shoes on <laughs> um, for the sake of the the place we're going. That's fair. All right, so we know where we're at. We have an idea of where we want to go. How do we get there? We talked a little bit about SMART goals. 
And so the idea is dreams without actions are just dreams. So you can't dream that you want to be a millionaire unless you put action to it and decide how do you want to get there. And uh, if that's an actual goal, there's going to be sacrifices and time commitments and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So talking about goals and how do we get there, how do you get there? Because how we do this is slightly different. Yes. So (sighs) when we have a goal in mind, so, you know, we talked briefly about this before the show of, you know, we had a time that we were up to our eyeballs in debt and, you know, just really trying to take a step back and like, we weren't happy with where we were. Um, It was starting the the financial strain was starting to impact our relationship and it was just, it was not a good season for us. And, um, having kids definitely made it even harder. So we took a step back from what we looked at or what our goals and our current situation was. And we basically said, we want to be debt free by this period of time. And we really talked through, okay, how do we get there? We looked at our current financial situation, how much you were earning, how much I was earning, and then where all of our budget was going. And we actually uncovered that basically your whole paycheck was going to daycare. Mm -hmm. And And driving to work. Yeah, and driving to work. And so by cutting that out, we we did have to take some sacrifices because you were able to work overtime at your previous job um which helped during some months but then when it got to the slow season you know that part of the paycheck was gone and so you know when I look at our goals it's step by step okay here is the ultimate goal and I basically work backwards so like what do we need to do to feel accomplished and that's part of the the background that I come from is, you know, what steps, what, how do I measure my success and, you know, what kind of give and take is there? Because like we pre COVID, we were debt free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, what happens when something like, it doesn't have to be a, a global pandemic, but you know, what happens if something destroys your goal or, you know, what if your goal has to change mid, sure, midway? So, and that's that's you bring up like something that isn't in our notes to think about is failure is okay. Yes, um, it's how you get back up and move forward because you're gonna. Uh, we can talk about pineapples now. <laughs> There's gonna be tap out moments. Yes, you're gonna get to a point. I mean, we've had it. Like we get to Many points where so. like this is a goal how we're getting there just isn't working. Like the sacrifice is too much or whatever. Um, and that's fine. Failure. Like once you, like when you look at failure as a negative thing, it's painful and it hurts. Yeah. And it's fair. I mean, it can be you know debilitating and depressing, but when you look as failure at how not to do something, it's a totally different perspective on how you get somewhere because yep. you have goals and you're going to set steps to get there. But you're most of the time you're not going to get there the first try or oh yeah a pandemic's going to happen and you're not going to be totally debt free anymore yeah. or whatever um yeah cars break and you have to buy new ones or spend money to get them fixed or you get two kids instead of one you know things right. happen <laughs> right I'm not complaining. I love all of my children. They are all wonderful. They just changed their goals. We were debating one more and got two. Anyway, um, yeah, so how do we get there? And my process is a little bit different, and it took me a while to figure this process out. Like some goals, like in our church's organizational structure, if you want to be a pastor, they list the steps out for you. You just follow the steps. Like that's very give and take. But for me, for all the other stuff that, like, somebody doesn't list out for us, I write things down and I journal and I plan. And it took me a while to find one I like, but I like this one. And so for this one, something I do is habits, right? Because 
leadership, and I don't want this to turn into like a whole leadership thing, but setting goals and taking the leadership of yourself, like, because we can be lazy and be bums and have great dreams and goals and never get anywhere. But you are what you put into practice, mm-hmm. right? And so, like, one of my goals is to be smaller, as my children have coined it, because, <laughs> and it's super, like, it, 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 it pulls on the heartstrings. But both of the two of my children, while we were on a walk the other day, were like, we walk to school every day because daddy doesn't want to die young. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> oh, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which is true. Like they're not wrong, but I'm like, oh. So like one of the things I walk to because I don't run because scripture says people who run without anybody chasing them are evil. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, but I write things down. Like, uh, I'll just tell you what they are because I can't remember. One of them is to to lose like fifty pounds, and so I set a goal. And I put, um, put my goal and then all of the things I want to do, like milestones, like, okay, I want to lose 50 pounds. So I want to do 20 pounds in March and so on. But then like physically wrote down, I want to drink more water. Remember I'm on a diet, walk, not eat the whole pizza, like wrote these things down and then keep Mm -hmm. myself accountable. But then... Like, one of the big ones, and uh, a friend of mine and I have been talking about this for a while, is I didn't have a solid morning routine. Like, no, I am a morning person within reason. I am not. And you are not. And for at least the last five or six years, I've been the take the kids to most of the time, Mm -hmm. stay at home. And so for me, I've recently discovered that my morning routine sets my day. Yes. And not everybody can do this. And this has been the friend of mine and I having this argument that not everybody can spend the first four hours of their day on themselves. I do. And so far, I've become ridiculously more productive in the process. But I've set habit trackers Mm -hmm. and things like I have to write these down. I can't just like, oh, I want to be a millionaire and then list out the steps and they'll just happen. I have to put in habits and put in practices. So my morning routine, I get up at 630. I do my devotional, I read a book, and then I walk the kids to school or work out. And then I come home, take a shower, and then I do my daily plan. And my daily plan every day starts with goal-specific. Like, I'm changing my daytime job, um, transitioning. Mm-hmm. So I list out the goals and things I want to have that smooth transition. And so for me, every day planning, okay, here's my goal. Here's what I'm doing today to achieve this goal. Mm -hmm. And then there's the bucket list things like to be debt free again, to have our forever home in the middle of nowhere, those kind of things. But it's identifying how to get there and then the sacrifices. Yeah. You tend to look at more of the milestones because you you have to celebrate the small wins. Yeah. And that, that drives you because for you you're such a big picture thinker. Like if you don't focus on the milestones and celebrating those small wins along the way, you get really discouraged. And for me, I'm totally different. Um, I'm focusing on the steps because in my head, I focus on the small things. And and even if it's like, I'm just one step closer to the goal for me, that keeps me focused enough. And so I'm the details person. So like, even if I'm like, um, I'm trying to think of a goal um, when we were working on being debt free. Cause I feel like that's kind of a universal one for everybody to mm-hmm. be able to understand. Like I'm looking at, okay, we're under the credit line for all of our credit cards or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm hitting this certain, you know, spot and you were still looking at the, we're still in debt And me, I'm looking at the, we're paying over the minimum payment every single month Mm -hmm. and we're finally making some headway on these stupid bills. But for me and you, and I think that's important to point out how different we are because you've got to know where you're, not only where your steps lie, but also where your spouse's steps are. Because like for you, when we weren't hitting certain goals, it was very discouraging for you. Yeah. And for me as your spouse, I had to, you know, keep in mind like, okay, you're not upset that we're not, because you knew that we were working towards the goal. It just wasn't going fast enough for you. Sure. And so 
you know, sometimes you're going to have to encourage your spouse. Like we're still moving in this direction. And for me personally, I tend to look at the facts. I'm very literal. No. Analytical. Yeah. Um, but saying, you know, we are this much closer and we're doing this amount of work really helped you. Um, at least from my perspective Mm -hmm. to help keep us on track because I love you. When Jeff is a little depressed or, you know, feeling down, you tend to use Amazon a little bit more than you should. <laughs> um, um, and, and me, to I'll throw myself under the bus. I don't know bus. what you're talking about. Um, because I tend to do the grocery shopping, I tend to buy more, like, food stuff. And mm-hmm. so, like, that's when the treats will come home, um, which we both benefit from. But like sure. knowing this helps keep us both on track. Yeah. But and yeah. and that's all fair. And and I agree. I'm totally like, okay, I have this big picture. Mm-hmm. But then I don't look at the oh, we met this thing that's on the way to mm-hmm. this. And yeah. so I've started doing that, which is like the point of this. And like um I'll put a link in this. This is the best self journal. So if you're a write down, need to put your milestones in and have a process. Um, it's there because for me, it's it's very much a now. I look at the little things like okay. I want to have a smooth transition in my daytime job, and here's all the steps. And so every day, it's is there something I can do mm-hmm. towards that step? And then I have this for like I still use digital stuff. Like I still have reminders and things mm-hmm. like. And vision boards, like vision boards are a, a big thing. Yeah. Um, I don't have one I can show you, but I generally speaking, I've always thought whatever is on your desktop is your vision board. So a lot of times, like if I wanted a car mm-hmm. or I wanted to work towards something, that was on my desktop because I would see it every yep. day. Or now it's you guys and the kids. So on my phone and my computer, it's usually a picture yep. of us because we're working towards, you know, having a better life for them. Mm -hmm. Or being able to pass on something to them. That's funny. The background. So I have two different computers. I have my work laptop. And in the background of that is beaches because it's our vacation spots Mm -hmm. that I really love. And so like there are some days I'm I'm not even going to lie. I love my job and it, it, I definitely enjoy every aspect of what I do, but there's some days where you just go to work and you're just, you know, (laughs) one of those days but it helps to drive me and remind me like this is why I work so hard mm-hmm. is to be able to afford those things. And then school, oh gosh, <laughs> I, I'm not a digital learner, but given our circum our current circumstances, that's, that's what we're doing. And so I have a picture of the kids and, you know, it just helps remind me that I'm doing this for them and oh gosh, it, it helps motivate me. So that one, that's a good one. But for me, because you use your journal and don't get me wrong, I do make lists as well because I, there's <laughs> something so satisfying about crossing things off of that to-do list. Yes, but tell them though, when you sit at your desk, you have two. <laughs> one is notes and one is to-do lists and they're two separate books. Okay, Which is Hold great on. and it makes me laugh because I'm like, why are there two? <laughs> Because I do all of that. I know. I know you do. This is not true because behind the camera, because I have no place to put them, is my notebook that I take notes in and my like actual journal that I write my thoughts for the day. This is my planner and my goals. Okay. I'm like, don't throw me under the bus. (laughs) Yes. No. I have, I have many different layers, but I have, I have a to-do list and, um, what I do is I will, I have one book that is specifically for my to-do list. I am trying to move to a digital place. It's just, I have found that I don't go to the digital space. I go back to my notebook and it just, it's something for me very satisfying about writing it down and it helps me to commit it to memory versus if I'm typing it, literally I type it and I can forget it. So for me, where I'm at right now, I have to write it down physically in a notebook. And then I have literally a secondary notebook that I just write notes and half the time they're incoherent. It is shorthand. Oh yeah. If, if you, anybody was to pick it up, you would be like, what is, is this Klingon? Like, what is this 
And so, yeah. She also, she also has three monitors. And, I and do. A whole. I have a pretty <laughs> sweet setup um, for work. Yes. And then, but that's just. I can't say anything. <laughs> I edit on a TV. <laughs> I know. God. My main monitor on my on my editing desk is a. Oh, is I thought a TV. you said man monitor for my, a second. <laughs> my man monitor. No. Um. Anyway. Yes. The point is, and just talking about do goals what works for you. And how, yeah, do what works for you. Like it took me a long time to find this because, like, mm-hmm. for a while, like school, like they tell you these are the twenty six classes you need to take. This is how many hours you need. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, and somebody else kept track of it. Now that yep. person happens to be my mother in law. Um. But for yeah. everybody else, it's just yeah. another person in the... Well, you know what? And find what works for you. But, you know, if you can't find something creative, I have a really good friend of mine. She used to use three different planners because they all did something different. She literally created yeah. her own. And, like, that was incredible. I'm so proud of her. And she's super creative. Like, And that's the, the, yeah. the concept behind, like, I still, like, I sit down in the morning and I write this out. Mm-hmm. And then... I literally put it in my phone, like the the planning part, like the yes. daily planner part, because I'm still like, I don't carry this with me. No. This is my morning routine stuff, my daily gratitude, what I'm thankful for, my main goal for the day. And then I write out my calendar stuff, but mm-hmm. then I take it and I put it into my phone because I'm a nerd. And also it will like, this isn't going to remind me because I get busy and life happens. Like it'll tell me, like I literally put in, I have to go pick up the kids from school. Mm-hmm. It's in my calendar. I write it in here, but it's in my calendar, and at yeah, two o'clock every day, I get an alert on my watch that says, "Hey, go get your kids." <laughs> yeah, but I th- I think that's okay to point out because realistically, like, how many people are just busy? Yeah, I and all of us. But we all need to make sure that we are leaning into, you know, our tools and devices. Like, it's sure. okay to have a reminder like I had I used to work from 12 to 8 and so I had an alarm and you guys still joke about it now at uh, 10 45 time to wake up well I was always up before 10 45 but time to go get ready for work yeah it's time to get ready for work or time to pay attention or time to put your homework down and get ready for work so you know using technology to your advantage is totally okay. Oh, yeah. And if you're an Apple user, everything tells you it's time to go get your kids. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. times I've been sitting down here and I'll like have, you know, my half an hour of electronics free and I'll hear like the bed will vibrate because that's where my phone is. And then my computer will vibrate because it's in my office. Echo location. And then I'm like, <laughs> what is happening? I'm like, oh, it's me. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Really important one that we need to talk about in our last couple minutes. We know where we're at. We've identified where we want to be and listing out the steps to get there. And that's for all of them. If you guys get a journal or a notebook or something as a couple that has your listed dreams and goals, like we talk about it enough because I, we, we, the show, have talked about our strategy meetings that you and I sit down pretty regularly yeah. and decide, is this still where we're going? Is this still how we want to get there? Yep. We do that intentionally because the important thing I want to talk about is what's your safe word? Pineapples, yes. whatever. There needs to be the openness for your spouse to come say, this is too much right now. Not that we don't want to achieve the goal, like this is still okay, but can yeah. we change how we're getting there? For example, the rule of four. If I'm gone so many nights mm-hmm. a week, you can veto. Um, when do you when do you stop and reevaluate how you're getting from here to there? Yeah. Or is there a moment where it's too hard? Or is it too many nights a week? Or whatever. Yeah. Because you don't want take school for example yeah so almost five or six nights a week you you're doing school until way too early in the morning yep i am okay with this yes but we also talk about we know there's dates and times and things coming and you do very good at making sure that all of us have time yes but for some people that's a lot and that's not going to work yeah so there needs to be it needs to be okay to have that conversation to tap out and say hey this is too hard right now. I need, you know, mm-hmm. one more night of us or the kids need or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
But, and I think when you bring that up too, because my last set of classes was really, really difficult. And we both noticed a significant change in our children's behavior. Sure. They were acting out a lot more. And most of it was just because they didn't have me because it was, it was an insane schedule there, especially the last half of the class and about three weeks before the end of class. So it was an eight set of eight week classes mm -hmm. and, um, you know, week five, it just, it got to a, a point where I was so overwhelmed between work and school and the children were just acting out and all of the things just kind of came to a head one week. And I was just, I looked at Jeff and I said, I can't do this. I'm going to look into dropping one of my classes just to take some of the burden off and I actually looked into it and I'm, I was so thankful that you had my back and said, okay, wh what are we going to do to make this work? And so I ended up just sucking it up and making it through. But I also knew that you had my back regardless of what decision I made. And we ended up, um, cause I'm in a program, I would end up forfeiting my program that ends in August. Mm -hmm. And so I have, only a few more months and I'd end up having to take one at that class over again. I'd have to, you know, repay for the class and it just, it would not have worked. And one of my sacrifices that I had to do is, you know, my time and it sucked. Let me tell you, it really sucked being away from my family. But at the end of the day, I, I managed to pass both classes and I, like I couldn't have done that without my husband's support and like knowing that he had my back the house there was a few days that it was not I would not say perfect but you know sure. there was a couple of messy house days and the kids had a little bit more screen time than we like um just to make sure that it worked and yeah. I think we ate out a little bit more than we normally and, did. And those things, but like, those are things that, like, you don't necessarily plan for, but you talk about. And we had yeah. a version like that when I was working at least one job, sometimes two, and mm -hmm. going to school. We had twins. Yeah. I stopped going to school for two years. Yes. And that was, like, that was, hey, the goal is still the goal, but we yeah. need to figure out a different way to get there. Or in our case, we just paused. Yep. And or I think as I did the minimum required to keep my license, yeah. whatever it was. Um, but those are things you need to be. It needs to be OK to have those conversations is yeah. the is the important thing. Like you can't just like you need to stop. That's not right. Well, no, the goal is still fine. Something between here and there is not working to keep your family a family unit. Yeah. Figure it out. Talk about it. Yeah. And I think we also had that realistic expectation of. I will walk away from my job. I will walk away from school if it is causing harm to my family. Sure. And I think that's something that we have always had kind of in the back of our heads. I think we've talked about it out loud once or twice. Yeah. But because we had that set up as a requirement, it's not, it's not something that we'll give, you know, if anything ever got between us with any of our jobs that we've ever had. Oh, sure. And that's always been like our family values have always been faith, family, church, career. Yeah. But I think when you're setting up those goals is, you know, what's that tap out moment? What, <laughs> what yeah. is your safe word? Um, <laughs> pineapple. pineapple. <laughs> um, but you need to have those open and honest conversations because if, if you can't have that kind of a conversation with your spouse, there's something wrong. Absolutely. And it, it we'll go into it in a, another show, but one joke that I've always had is, you know, if you're having a celebration moment, you know, if your significant other is not the first person that comes to mind oh, yeah. to celebrate with, there's a problem. You That's know, same somewhere. with your goals. Huh? That's in there somewhere. I, I know it is. Yeah. Um, and it's something I've said before is just yeah you're you're choosing life goals like this is the yeah. person that you have chosen to have life with live life with them you know Absolutely. that includes the good and the bad so but i think also it's important to realize when you're setting up these goals they have to be achievable cuz you know if you're yeah flipping burgers 
which there's nothing wrong with. We've no. both done this at different points in our lives. Yeah. But you're not going to be a billionaire. There's nothing wrong with flipping burgers. But if your goals are bigger than that, then yep. you should reevaluate how you get there. And we've talked about that. You should always be looking for the next best thing, whether that's work or not spouse. You should not be looking for the next best spouse. <laughs> that's not what I mean. In setting your goals, if, you're, if your current situation does not help you get to your goals... You should be evaluating how to get there. Yep. And uh, it sounds horrible and mean when we say this, and there's nothing wrong with it, but minimum wage is not going to get you to your goals. And no matter which side of the aisle you're on, minimum wage jobs were not meant to get you to no. to whatever your goals are. They're meant for my 15-year-old to buy yeah. skates and lunch. Yeah, <laughs> but also to say, because we've also been, you know, we come from having to work two or three minimum mm-hmm. wage jobs to make Rent. make it to our goals. <laughs> so yeah, life to, to eat. So, um, but like there's things that you can do to better yourself. And, you know, sometimes that's part of the sacrifice that we talked about is, sure. you know, you're not going to have you, the big house on the corner, you know, maybe you need to take on a roommate or two or three yeah. To have a good, safe living condition. And I know that there's many layers to that. So not without going into many of the other things that could be, you know, hitting that. Sure. But you're going to have to make some sacrifices to get to your goal. I think of a, a good friend of mine um, who, single mom, and, you know, she, she did have people like her baby daddy, you know, did pay child support. So she was blessed in that fact, but you know, she had to make some serious sacrifices and I'm so proud of the woman she is now because she busted her butt as a waitress Mm -hmm. for many years. And then she picked up a side job waitressing also at the same time. And, you know, she made a career out of her side job but she had to put herself through school and training and stuff like that. And so I just remember, I think it was like a two year stint where she was working two jobs and living in, you know, being a roommate and all these other yeah. different things to make sure that she could create a better life for her kids. And that sacrifice has really paid off. She's in a great place now, but you know, there you're gonna have to make, sacrifices and sometimes it's yeah brewing coffee at home or <laughs> right by hamilton yep. beach um <laughs> but those are things like but those are realistic like i mean we hear the tiktoks and the in the commercials and stuff all the time how many times did i go to mcdonald's oh my just gosh. to find out that i could make a ham and cheese sandwich at home and i mean a, that's a bit extreme but a yeah. number three is like 15 dollars now well right that's the dollar menu is not a dollar anymore. That's hundred dollars a week just for lunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, that four hundred dollars a month, twelve hundred dollars, twelve fifty two. Yeah, whatever. I'm it's impressed. <laughs> you just did all that in your head. <laughs> anyway, but what could that you know thousand dollars go yeah. to? Um, that's more than that. Yeah, but I mean, and sometimes it's investing in yeah. a new crock pot or. An uh, Instapot in, or something. Instapot changed our life. Right. So did an air fryer. But things like that. Like, I, you know, I would much rather just eat out all the time. But It's so much easier and convenient. Yeah. But things like that. And setting, like, those are some of the goal setting that we're talking about. Like, evaluate all of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's going to be things like you're just going to need underwear. Okay. Figure out how you're going to pay for underwear. But there's some things like, do you need to go get the $8 Starbucks every day? Um, or is it like, oh, we did this. We were talking about when we used to stop, um, every morning we would stop on the way to, on Sunday mornings, we would oh, stop yeah, yeah. and get breakfast and we were spending like $50 a week and I'm like, well, cause we would do breakfast and lunch. Yeah. And I was like, so then we figured out they make K cups for tea and coffee. And so now it's, yeah. you know, $4. Yeah. So it's know where you're at. Figure out where you want to go. What's your safe word? What's your safe word? Figure out how to get there. And then know, uh, 
where the line is on the sacrifice and and boundaries right communication mm-hmm. which has been the the over arching the primary theme of everything we've ever talked about is talking about it like if i had goals and you never know what they are you have no idea how to help me get there no. um yeah you good i'm good all right guys like subscribe smash the button let us know what you want to talk about if you are having uh some mental health issue i don't like the word issue but if you have some desire for help or therapy or some further support we are not it we are not mental health professionals seek professional help there's nothing wrong with that it is okay not to be okay i like that. Mm-hmm. um until next time we will see you later bye